I talked to a bunch of expert, bone-sucking, meat-loving Americans today, and they all say the same thing. What? The what? steak tastes better on the bone. Maybe. And the reason for this claim is that flavors within the bone gets mm -hmm. transferred to the steak and soak into the beef during cooking. Damn. Is it the truth? I don't know. Or is it a bone-sucking lie? <laughs> Let's find out. What's up, JPC gang? Welcome back to another episode of Jam Pack Cooking. That's right, it's your boy Chef Ray, Mr. Money. And it's another beautiful day out here, man. So we back outdoors playing with our toys. The beef. They say the beef is better on the bone. I don't know. We're going to put it to the test today, me and you. We got a tomahawk, a real buy off the bone, and we have a T-bone steak. But that's enough talking. Let's get right into it. Welcome back. This is another episode of Jam Pack Cooking. Let's eat edition. 36. Let's go, baby. What's up, JBC gang? Welcome back. Cheers. Sipping sand grills and cooking steaks today, all right? Have you ever heard somebody say the steaks are better on the bone and all meats is better with a stick? From my personal experience, we gonna put it to the test because I never really paid attention to it. But I do know I love ribs. This is beef today. We're not doing pork ribs, not doing none of that. We got three cuts of beef that's going on the grill today. We're gonna do a reverse sear on them, bring them up the temperature, bring them about to a medium, medium rare. We got a tomahawk here. We got a T-bone steak. And we have a couple ribeyes, just off the bone, regular ribeyes. Dried them a little bit, they aged about 24 hours, which is not a lot. It's not bad, we dry these 24 hours. I don't think that's gonna make a big difference. Everybody got the same treatment, so this is gonna be fair. But you got a job today, JPC gang. I want you to leave it down in the comment. What is your favorite way to cook a steak? What temperature you like it at? And what's your fa favorite cut of steak? Typically, I'm a ribeye guy. Great marbling, wagyu if I had my choice, but today this is not ragu, this is USDA Prime. A lot of people say this is the same cut as the ribeye, and you would be right. But what makes this a tomahawk is the cut. It actually is supposed to have at least about five inches of bone that's left on the rib bone that's left on this ribeye. It's got this bone that's similar to an ax. So they call this a tomahawk steak. Now if you come over here and look at this one, we're just gonna set this up there for a second. It's basically the same cut of meat as this. It's, you gotta turn it around this way because this is the, the ribeye, we call this the cap. Now you got this beef, this is the eye of the ribeye. Eye of the ribeye. And then you have the ribeye cap. And this is the ribeye cap. Now this is a pretty big tomahawk, Texas size tomahawk steak. We never go simple, JPC gang. No baseability. We're gonna put a reverse sear on these steaks. All three of them. Bring them up to temperature, take them off, sear them, get that nice crispification on the outside, and you're gonna let me know what you think about this steak today. So grab your sangria and let's get these steaks rolling. We're gonna make us a real quick, easy, simple steak rub. This is what we use. And this is what I want my JPC gang to use, all right? Couple tablespoons of black pepper, coarse grain black pepper. Couple tablespoons of magic dust. One tablespoon of salt. You don't have to worry about any of the other flavors that, that magic dust, that's an all-purpose rub is good on beef, chicken, fish, seafood. That's an all-purpose rub. It's not just a barbecue rub. Yeah, it's got some great barbecue flavors in there. That rub go good and pairs with a lot of different cuts of meat. You need some so this steak rub won't just, you put it on it, fall off the beef, and it's not acting right. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna take about a teaspoon of worship sauce, a teaspoon of your favorite oil. This is EVOO, extra virgin olive oil. Tablespoon, I'm sorry. Tablespoon of worship sauce, tablespoon of your favorite oil. And we're gonna use that so our rub can adhere and stick onto our beef today. Get that a slight mix and get it out to the side. That's all we need, baby. All right, JPC gang, look, let's put a slight trim on this beef, on these steaks. We don't want to take a lot off of it, but we do want to make sure that this is nice and not over. It got too much stuff that we not going to eat. It's not going to melt away. It's not going to render. So let's find some of that right now. These are some pretty good cuts. Like I said, it's not a Wagyu or anything like that, but it is a Prime, USJ Prime. Nine times out of 10, this not going to cook down in it. So what we're going to do, it's not going to melt away. It won't render. It'll just be a lot of chewing going on there. And that's not what we're doing. No baseability here at JPC Gang. For me personally, you know, I'm not gonna take a lot of the fat off because uh, fat equal flavor. This is the good fat that's gonna melt down. We just don't want too much of it. So we'll take that off and, you know, a little bit up top. Get yourself a sharp knife. It'll make the job a lot easier. When they French these bones out, this is more for, for presentation. It's gonna give you a handle. Some people like the meat on the stick. Hey, it's to each his own. So we got a little bit of the bone there for you bone folks. 
on this T-bone steak, we looking pretty good. Take a little bit more of that thing, you all. Just a little bit of that. You got two kinds of T-bone. This here, which you don't see a lot of the tenderloin meat on here, and it's not a big strip on there. If you was to order a porterhouse, they'll send you out something that looks totally different. More of the tenderloin meat, bigger piece of the strip steak. The reason a porterhouse will give you a lot bigger portion of the meat is because it's cut from the rear end of the short line. So you get more of the tenderloin meat and you get more of the strip steak. It's just a bigger portion, but it's the exact same steak. It's a T-bone steak. As far as trimming that, that's all I'm gonna do. I'm not gonna take anything else off of that T-bone steak. On these ribeye, I'm just gonna kinda take the same approach. Take some of that sinew off, that chewy fat, that leather. That's not really gonna break down in the cook. All right, that's gonna do it for now. So, so now what we wanna do, we're gonna take our, our mixture, our glue, if you wanna call it, cause I'm a barbecue guy, you know, and that's what I call it, glue. It's just something to help the rub or seasoning that you have stick to the meat. Flip it over, get the other side, it's the same scenario, paint it on, and this is just like I say, so that rub can stick to this steak and won't fall off. And it serves an extra purpose cause we don't have any base ability putting that extra flavor on these steaks. Now that we got that on here, you wanna take some of your rub, half and half black pepper and magic dust, with a tablespoon of salt. Now, if you don't have the magic dust, BigSmokiesBBQ.com for your magic dust, baby. Don't be a noob, don't be the same. Go get you some magic dust and make these great steaks, or you can just go with salt and pepper, base ability level <coughs> at 10. That's on you. Take that steak rub and get it all over these steaks. This is a large cut of beef right here, so don't be scared to season this steak. One thing you don't want is a bland steak. On the smaller pieces, you don't want to go as heavy, but of course you want to season the steak real good and get that flavor all through there. We're not going to overdo it to where it's overtaking the beef flavor, but we are going to season our steaks well. You got your favorite steak seasoning or whatever, use that. But I promise you, this one right here is going to take your flavorability to the maximication. It's going to actually help out the crispification that we're going to put on when we get that syrup. We got our steak seasoned. We want to let that rest for about maybe two or three minutes. Let that rub start soaking into that meat to help out with the flavor. While that's happening, I'm going to show you a little bit how I got my grill set up for this cook. We're doing a reverse sear. It's a lot of different ways to cook these steaks. The way I'm showing you today is one of the most flavorful ways. Locking that juice, crispification on the outside. This is going to be delicious, JPC gang. Delicioso, baby. So let me wash my hands and come on over to the grill. Let me show you what we got going on, baby. All right, so we out here at the grill today. Now, the way I got my grill set up, this is an offset stick burner smoker that I've been having for years. Not too spack about this one, we got our big toys up at the kitchen. But look, check this out. So we got all this extra space, and over here we got a, a bed of hot charcoal. Now, that's gonna allow that, that heat to push off that ambient heat because this is an offset stick burner, and I have my uh, airflow vents wide open in the stack on this side. I'm gonna set the steaks over here in this empty space. What that's gonna do is allow that, that ambient heat to flow over these steaks and bring them up to temperature right where we want them and not overcook them. This is called a reverse sear. What we basically doing is bringing the steak up to temperature and then we're gonna sear the inside. So we're gonna start with this tomahawk. You hear that, that sizzle? That's okay, there's nothing wrong with the sizzle. T-bones, I realize. Normally I don't do this. But I'm gonna turn this this way because that bone is going closer toward that heat and what it's gonna do is protect my meat from taking on too much of that heat on this side. So, all right, so here, I think we're perfect. I think we're set up perfect here. They're gonna climb the temperature. Let's go ahead and get the grill closed and then we'll check for temperature in about an hour. 45 minutes to an hour and see where it started coming up at. Back to our sangria and chillaxing. The steak not gonna take long, but we doing it nice and slow. We bringing it up to temperature. So we're going for a medium rare, about 140 to 145. If you wanna go any more than that, you're going toward that, that medium to medium well. With that being said, if you wanna tell the temperature, take the accurate temperature. Feel this and feel that, feel that, and it might work for you if you're that seasoned. But you don't wanna burn an expensive cut of meat. If you're gonna spend, you know, $100, $200 on a steak, why would you wanna overcook your steak? Let's not be basic, let's not do that. No base ability today. Get to one of these, instant read thermometer, instant read meat thermometer. From about here to here is where it read that meat and then give you accurate temperature. I'll leave a link down in, to, in the description for that one there, where I got that one from. It's real inexpensive, 20, 30 bucks. That is what I use when I'm cooking my steak. Turn out the best, all right? Take a look at here, JPC gang. We've been having this, it's been a part of the game for, for years. This here is the Cajun microwave game. Shout out to Louisiana, New Orleans, all them, all them people, good, good pit masters down that way, down by that water. 
That's some great water down there. And these normally where you could take the lid off of this and inside we'll drop a whole hog down there, which we are going to do one day, JPC gang. Drop it in the comment down below if you want to see your boy do that whole hog real soon. But today we're not doing that. This is what we're doing today. We needed something to sear our steak off that hot, fast contact. And this is perfect. Come on in here and let me show you what we got here. Typically up top, we'll put a big fire up here. We're gonna cook that hog from the top to the bottom. And this is made out of that steel and aluminum. So it's able to generate that ambient heat inside of there and cook it like an oven. That's why it's called a Cajun microwave. Today we're using it as a grill. What we're gonna do is take this up. We take this one here straight up. We're gonna take some charcoal and get them down. We don't need much. Going for that hot sear, we're gonna get some good hot charcoal down. We have some of this hickory wood, hickory wood chunks. So gonna throw some of these hickory wood chunks right in this fire and let them cook down into coals. And that's gonna burn way hotter. It's gonna put a, a lot more uh, BTUs off than what them coals are doing. So we close that down, let that come up to temperature, and once them coals form and them, that, that wood cook down, it's gonna give me a good bed of coals. I can spread out a little bit, and when we start to sear them steaks off, it's gonna be ridiculous. Let's check on these steaks and see where we at, baby. All right, JPC gang, it's been about 30, 35 minutes on these steaks. We wanna check them and make sure we're not going over because the ribeyes are a lot thinner, they're about an inch, uh, inch and a half thick, but that tomahawk is almost two inches thick. So it's gonna cook at different times. If you, you know, you're dealing with that problem, then you know what to do. Pull some off. Let's just check and see where we at. So they, these are looking good, baby, and they smell even better. Let's get in there. We're gonna get right here. And I told you it reads from here to here. So let's put that part in there and see where we at. See, we're already kicking up to about 123, 124. We're about 123, 124, so that's good. On, on these, I don't want I wouldn't want to go too much more. And this one even, yeah, that's about 127. So that's actually perfect for what we going for. Let's check the same scenario, about 127. So they're about in, anywhere from 122 to 127. So I'm good with that. I go ahead and pull these off and get them off to the side, let them rest. And then we're gonna put that 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 nice sear, that extra crispification on it. So we got the ribeyes that's off the bone and then we have a T-bone that's cooking on the bone. Now theory goes that when you heat these bones up, the bone marrow and the richness and the fat that's inside of there actually disperse throughout the meat. And that's why they're saying the meat on the bone give more flavor. Is this the real deal or not? Let's get these off to the side. Let's check the tomahawk and see where we at on the tomahawk. Now the reason for me having this bone toward this heat, we want that bone to heat up, we want that bone to get hot, we want that, that bone marrow and fat and richness that's inside of there to start melting and see is the theory right, will the richness and the fat that's in the bone disperse throughout this whole piece of meat. Let's see where we're at for as temperature on this one. Get in the thickest part of the meat and we're pushing about 110. I want to get it to at least 125. Yeah, 125 is where I want it, so I'm gonna leave that on there for a little bit longer. So we'll see here shortly, we're at 110. We're gonna leave it on there for about five or 10 more minutes and make sure we get us a good, nice sear on that bad boy. All right, JPC gang, we got a good, nice, hot bed of charcoal down. Yeah, I can barely keep my hand there. What I'm doing here is spraying this grate down. I'm gonna spray this grate down real good because our steak just came up to temperature. So let's get a good spray, a good spritz on this grate. There's nothing more but some canola oil. You can use any type of oil you like, but this is canola oil. Make sure you're being careful when you're spraying any type of oil over open flame. We got the grate oil down. Now take a look at these steaks. Just check the temperature on this tomahawk and it's at 125, 125, 126. So it's ready to come off. Look at that big boy, that's what we looking for. That's a tomahawk for you right there. Big tomahawk steak, real by. So we got these steaks cooked to the right temperature we want them, which is about a medium. They look good enough to eat already. <laughs> Let's get that crispification on the outside. Turn these steaks off, baby. Watch this. You can see they juicy, sear it off, 
You want to let them rest for about five to ten minutes. You know, as long as you can, ten the better, so that juice can redistribute throughout that meat. And guess what? It's time to cut them. See how we did. Make sure that we got this bone and this regular steak thing down and packed. Let's go, baby. Salute. It's the moment of truth, JPC gang. It's the moment of truth. Make sure you got you a sharp one. I'll leave this in the description because this is what I'm using to sharpen up this knife today to cut into this real bar. Look at here, even before we open this up, it's been resting, we got it lightly tinted in the fall. If I didn't tell you to do that, make sure you do that. Tint your steak, your meat, and fall while it's resting. It can't help itself. It's pooling. Came through dripping. It's got the drip drip. You get out the way, boy. Which one y'all want to start with, JPC gang? The T-bone, the tomahawk, or the ribeye? Me personally, I think we should start with the. Let's let's set this. Let's set this. We're gonna say the best for last. Come here, Juice. Don't leave. Don't leave me. I bet you it's got this smoky, slightly smoky, just kiss with the smoke. Stop thinking with the base ability thinking. Now get in there. You see what's going on? The juice just pooling. Let's take this one here out. Just so I can show y'all. It's gonna be a fur. We're gonna do it fur. We're not gonna do it. Any type of fur. Now listen here, JPT gang. Listen. If you like your steak well done, I'm not mad at you. You hear me? Now you know the more this steak sit, the more it's going, you know, pool and turns that pink and it's going to come out. But just look at that. Just look at that, JPC gang. Look at that. The juice is just tripping, baby. So what we want to do is get that down. You're not going to go in yet. Set them in the juice. Mrs. T-Bone, it's your time. Come on up here and get closest to that bone as possible. That bone, that bone is for the pit master. We ain't gonna use the blade, we just gonna hold and pull. <laughs> it's juicy, tender. And let's cut up the let's cut up this sirloin. Stop playing. You see what's going on, JPC gang? That's a piece of the tender, it's barely sticking together. The tender part of this T-bone steak. We got to remember that's the T-bone steak. Gang, 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 gang. It's dripping. It's dripping, gang. Cut her off the bone. You really ain't got to cut it. You just, you know, push her off the bone. And there's the bone. That's for the pit master. The cap gone, okay? The cap gone. No cap. The cap gone. <laughs> yes, Lord. Look at that juice going to pull up. Mm -hmm. So let's cut a slice off of here. <laughs> That's a nice medium. If you like it anything more than that, I mean, it's going to be mooing. We don't like our steak mooing. We just like it moist and tender and juicy. And the more it sit, the more that oxidation gonna go back in the meat and the pink it get, you know how it go. We're gonna try out this one first. We're gonna try the real bar. Let's cut it up. Real bar off the bone, how I typically eat my steak. Come on. <laughs> wow. Mm, mm, mm. That's a great steak. It's wonderful. So let's put it to the test. Now we're gonna take a piece of the T-bone steak. Third line, you see how tender it is. You see how it's pulling apart. You see how it's cutting. Come on now, stop playing. It's that tender. Come on. <laughs> mm. it, it's fucking delicious. It, 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 you hit the sangria right after that bite. Let's talk about this T-bone steak. This T-bone steak, you can tell the bite that I had, it's a more leaner cut of beef. And just because of who cooked it and what we did to it, of course, it's tender, it's juicy. You know, the gang don't play no game. So like, you can't beat it because like, just this, this because of what we did to it. That piece of that, that T-bone, that spinalis, or that, that, that tenderloin, it brings me right back to the cap. I'm thinking I'm eating a ribeye. So I can't really tell a difference in the tenderloin and the ribeye cap. I mean, don't get me wrong, the ribeye cap, the greater beef, that's not A5 Wagyu. Yeah, so I can't, I'm, I'm not gonna judge it just off of that. 
Let's get to the big boy. Tomahawk steak with a reverse sear. Come here. Come here. I'm cool. I, I don't I don't prefer you can send me either one of these steaks and I'm happy. The bigger the better. So of course send me that tomahawk. <laughs> but listen, at the end of the day, any one of these steaks and I'm happy. I'm not a big fan of the T-bone steak like that. I mean, if, to each his own. Porthouse is not, I'm not, it's not my thing. I'm a ribeye type of guy. I love my ribeyes. So I want you to leave it down in the comment. Let me know what you think about these steaks and do you like it on the bone or off the bone? Me personally, I feel like I can't tell the difference. The only difference I can tell is that I uh, have a toy to take home for my take home box. That's the only difference. I appreciate you for watching. I love you for watching. Make sure you wash your hands and quarantine. And it's almost, we almost there, baby. Keep praying and moving. And blessings is coming. Until next time, this is your boy, Chef Ray, Mr. Money. Peace and love. Mm-hmm.